Hi, my name is Lauren Luttrell, and I wanted to do another part of uh, consciousness. So this is part two, and this is about exploring how you can have a visual uh, construct of reality that is separate from the uh, reality you see with your eyes. And it's kind of how, I think it might be what people call third eye, um, but let's get started. I call them memory bubbles. And um, first thing you should remember about uh, reality, is, that even that you're experiencing, is that there are knowns, uh, misknowns, alternative knowns, and unknown unknowns. And that is important when you're creating your memory bubbles because you should be consciously identifying um, what may alter a conclusion you have come up with based on what you've experienced because the experience the foundation of an experience um, really lays is important for how valid the conclusions in that memory are later on in life so the step one is to create any visual image to represent um, a category which you're going to sort these different scenarios into. Uh, like if you want to, or the example here is about death. Uh, it's a known, uh, it's a known known in war, at least our present wars. And so you use those skull and crossbones um, as a visual thought for that known category. And you just close your eyes. Um, and and see with your mind almost like dreaming but in real life and then step two is while holding that visual thought um, created in step one you can place an overlay effect over the category um, giving it further meanings like an opaque effect uh, with lighter resolution the less likely or forceful the category and subcategories are. Uh, that kind of means if, if there's a lot of unknown unknowns about what you're experiencing or going through, um, you would want to create any sort of overlay or um, you can even, you know, add a sense of smell to it or a, um, an emotion. I actually think that identifying each memory bubble with an emotion is very helpful for um, replay for accurate replay too if you take into consideration that that emotion um, exists uh, and, and then you can remove it to have a clear understanding of what went on and so you create these uh, the shell of a memory bubble before you want to go into the experience so let's say if we're going to go with the first example of death um, let's say you're in, you're gonna, you want to remember a funeral that you're going to. So you create that mental image and maybe put uh, the person's face on the bubble. And then you want to just experience every single moment you can uh, in that experience. And this is so, I think this is kind of what people say about being mindful. You want to um, know all the senses that you're feeling and even feelings that don't have sense names yet because I feel that feeling is a primary sense and then our eyes and nose and taste and hearing are uh, senses, secondary senses that evolve from these feelings. And so, um, where was I? So these gradients that you come up with, and they can be whatever you want, because this is you programming your mind and your memories, and and whatever works for you is what you should go with. Uh, and these gradients uh, represent quantity and quality of each category. Um, and by each category, I should probably rephrase that. Uh, If I were to rephrase it, it would get really complicated, and I don't think we should get too complicated. This is just part two. 
just play around with with different overlay effects um, so that at a distance you can get a re uh, a feeling in your body about uh, the any faulty foundations in that memory that's just why this stuff comes up first number one create the shell before you enter a conscious now and then to remember to put in place overlay effects so then we get to step three four five six seven eight three is to begin building your mind visual by mentally clicking on the icon you made in steps one and two um, and have another screen pop up with a 3D building space to begin the story and visual thinking. If so, you want to create the shell of the memory, understand that what you're about to be experiencing is going to be placed into that memory ball or memory shell ball, whatever. And, um, and then after when you're self-reflecting, you want to bring up another screen in your mind and uh, have the scene play out like a, a memory movie. And you are able to do that because there's this thing in your brain, and I can't remember the name of it, but I'll, if somebody wants to know the official name of it, I can just ask me in the comments. Uh, and you're your brain is built to have dual processing and it's built to visually um, understand realities in this third eye, if you want to call it kind of way. Uh, it's something that I've held on to since I was a little kid due to some childhood trauma, but I know that at least my son has uh, the ability to work with his mind just popping his head and I want him to share his story um, after I share mine. Oh, I need to stop saying I'm so much. But we'll see if he if he feels like it. Because his is different than mine. Everyone has different mental realities and experiences. So in this example, as more knowns are known, the 3D visual becomes more and more complex and inter intra related uh, with other active thinking bubbles. As a timeline or chronology is established, the 3D static turns to 3D movie to be paused, rewinded, and fast forward as willed or intended during self-reflecting. So every new experience you have is going to be connected in some way to past experiences and to fully get the best benefit out of this system will be to start connecting the different thought patterns and you'll see there's stuff in biology that works with math that works with chemistry uh, that everything's just related but reframed a little bit and once you start making those connections you can start having real innovative uh, thinking that's not hard that just comes out of you because you been training your brain to be thinking this visual way and pictures stay a thousand words and so which a movie says a million so then you want to store these mental image orbs in a mental room you like to be in or even outside of nature someplace the example here is like a huge oak wooden tree house high in the air, surrounded by colorful birds, with your most favorite deep comfy chair next to you, uh, with your cabinet of imagery orbs. And so you just picture, after you've created the shell, experienced the now, reflected to, you know, kind of solidify, put the gradients over the elements you need to uh, for your almost like foundation checkpoints for the future to understand that your experience is not going to be the true, true reality because of how many perspectives are involved. And so uh, the best thing to do is just understand that and work with it. And then in your mind, store them someplace. And, and this is where you need to visualize. Uh, for me, I store, well, 
okay, so the example is about a wooden tree. I have a, uh, in my mental happy place, it's, there's like a well that I can dive down into and, and nobody else can get in there and it's secure. It's almost like from the Little Mermaid, how she stores all of her little trinkets she finds. I store my little orbs on walls and there's actually a picture, the last picture here, I call it my memory well. And um, those are just my memories being stored in a location in my brain where I can go back and, and visit them. Step five is to learn and revisit your imagery orbs as necessary for updating and strategizing. Visualize strings connecting different thoughts and pieces together uh, and piecing together a reality. This allows you to see different perspectives involved as you can account for as many possible contingency plans as possible. Something that I have had to do for a long time is come up with contingency plans and the best way I know how to do that is to just account for every possible scenario that could be in existence. Step six is just to practice, refine, learn, and improve. And this is all you. Any new suggestions you want to do, you get to do. And then once you have once you're good at practicing and understanding your own past and present realities, you can start holding multiple perspective realities, uh, past, present, future, and then again, um, start practicing, refining, learning, and improving on holding multiple perspectives. And I'm running out of time, so I want to go through what these visuals are. This is a memory collection of, you know, a birthday party, fishing with your parents, an engagement, your first kiss, scuba diving, um, an eclipse. Uh, graduating this one is about a doctor's memory and so when I say you know click on the doctor memory then a another screen opens up and it's a movie and this is one where uh, the anesthesiologist gave me some anesthesia to take out a lump but he didn't give me enough and I woke up in the middle and I uh, all I could see was a blue screen cutting off where the doctors were working and I could feel them snipping and cutting like a pressure pain, not a searing pain. I told them to, to stop. They told me, well, I told them, call the, the anesthesiologist, stop. And they said, no, sh we can't stop. But the anesthesia came over and I told them that this better not be a placebo. And then I blacked out again. And when I woke up, I knew that the experience was real because I had ripped a vein in my arm. Um, and it was all, I'm super white, so it was all red underneath, and you could see. And uh, I got a bunch of Vicodin as a consolation prize, I like to say. Uh, I've, so this is a, an example of different memories that you can have in your mind, and how you can click on them, and a memory will pop up. Um, I keep all my memories in a memory well. My son... Do you still use the library? <laughs> okay. Well, my son has a crazy world, but I'd like him to tell it when he's comfortable with it. And he is not at this time. So have a great day, and we'll talk soon. Bye.